Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. And thanks for joining us for another Watch It Wednesday. This is our second installment in a, it'll probably end up being an eight or 10 part series. We're watching somewhere between two and three hours of footage that the uh, Navy made, we believe around 1999, when they were surveying the ship prior to turning her over to the state of New Jersey. In our last installment, we watched uh, about 15 minutes of them exploring the ward room and some of the state rooms around that area. So it was interesting to see what condition those spaces were in there versus where all that stuff has been moved uh, and interpreted now that the ship is open as a museum. So in today's section, I'm not even sure what we're going to be seeing yet, uh, but we will watch it for probably another 15 minutes or so and uh, then move on. So just a uh, brief content warning for everyone. There, this is somebody with like a shoulder mounted 90s era camera. So it, the footage uh, will make me seasick while we're watching it and it may do the same to you back home. Uh, apologies for that. That sort of just is what it is. It looks like we're starting this video off in the officer's galley or the uh, the serving area and the scullery on the main deck level, not the actual officer's gallery, uh, officer's galley one deck below. And this stuff all looks pretty similar to how it is today. We don't go in the scullery much. Uh, the serving area up there we do use. There's the top of the dumbwaiter. Uh, let's see. So now we're in an office, uh, we're heading aft on the main deck. Many of these spaces have since been gutted to be turned into either offices or museum spaces. Uh, notice that chair is wired to the table so that it doesn't move. And on the left hand side of that door was a refrigerator. So I'm really not sure what that space was. This space took me a while to figure out Notice the desk and all the tables and the uh, wiring trunk and dredger hoists in the middle of the room. This is the ship's office and the captain's office, which has been completely gutted to be our CEO's uh, stateroom, or our CEO's office. That's a decanning scuttle for one of the five inch guns up above to drop the uh, powder cans through after you fired it. And it's got a dehumidification tube going through it now. So that's looking into the wardroom, and then we're turning 180 degrees, and we're looking aft. So we are on the starboard side of the ship, heading aft. There's one of the dehumidification machines with all the tubes coming out of it. All of these spaces are completely altered by the museum, so it's real interesting to see how they looked in service. More office spaces up forward on the starboard side just after the wardroom. This one is now used by the ship's accountant. It's got a closet sort of space in the back which also has uh, like an office space and a safe right there, and a larger storage area behind it. All that shelving is still there, of course. We use it for office supplies primarily. I'm not familiar with that yellow and gray striped door. That is not there anymore, and I haven't seen it laying around. This is one of the uptake spaces on the main deck of midships. Notice that it is used as a storage space. And 
and even has a desk in it. This space is currently our maintenance office. It's largely unaltered. Still has several chairs and desks in it, uh, although completely covered in tools and paper and whatnot. Again, all the cabinets are wire tied shut. That's so that when the ship is being towed, Nothing falls off or drawers come open, etc. The last thing you need is water coming out of a space because there's some sort of hole and you can't open the door because a chair has fallen in front of it. And there's one of the dehumidification machines again. I'm not entirely sure how many of them were installed, but uh, I've seen them numbered up to at least eight. So there was possibly more than that. This is the Admiral's bathroom. So we are now up on the O1 level of the ship on the port side. This is the Admiral's cabin. Mm -hmm. This is the Admiral's bathroom. So we are now up on the O1 level of the ship on the port side. This is the Admiral's cabin. Mm -hmm. Notice the desk is where the bed should be. The bed frame is empty. I don't recognize that desk at all. Uh, this is the Admiral's cabin. That light locker leads out to the uh, exterior deck. Oh, look, there are plants in the uh, holder there. I think we might have just had a Bigfoot sighting on the battleship. Now we're in the captain's cabin looking at the air conditioning. Uh, we're looking forward and outboard to the starboard side. So the, the furnishings in here are relatively similar to what we have today in their layout. Oh, Bigfoot again. There's the ship's silver cabinet. We're in his uh, bedroom right now. That wiring trunk. Captain's, oh, the toilet seat's completely different. It is no longer a wooden toilet seat. Interesting. This is the pantry between the captain and the admiral's cabin. So just some room for some final plating and preparation before the food made down in the galley gets passed out to the captain. Got some more staterooms up here on the 01 level. Oh, hey, this stateroom actually has matched chairs in it. That's a nice change of pace.
Yeah, basically, this whole O1 level is just officer staterooms. They're more junior officers, so they're all multi-bed. I wonder if this video is going to show every single one of them. I wonder why that hole is cut. I'm not quite sure what we're looking at there. I'm going to have to track that one down. All of these manhole covers and things are removed for better ventilation for the dehumidification. So I don't think I've ever taken that one off and looked inside. The corrosion seemed to be minimal. Here's that yellow and gray striped door again that uh, we don't seem to have anymore. I don't recognize it. I'm not sure why they lingered on it so long. We've got some water damage sitting here in this corner. If this is the passageway I'm thinking of, we still have a water intrusion issue to this day. Yeah, and you can see corrosion up above where the uh, wire run is. There are stuffing tubes in the deck above that. It's likely that the water is getting in through a wasted stuffing tube and then running right down the wire several decks. Uh, this stateroom also is showing water damage. I'm familiar with this one. I think we're up on the O2 level now. Um, the wood paneling on the desk tells me this is some of the flag spaces. You can see how the wall is curved around a five inch gun. Uh, but this one, the deck in the overhead is completely wasted away because the teak on top rotted out. And uh, there are several, that's the base of the flag bags right there. There are several staterooms up there on the O2 level where the decks were completely rotted out. All of the doors, of course, would be sealed, although that one is not. Um, while the ship is mothballed, so there's only one door in, I'm suspecting it was the one by the wardroom. Every other door would be wired shut. The paint that we're seeing throughout here, with the exception of where we're seeing water damage like up here, is in uh, pretty impressive condition. The dehumidification process, which at this point has been running for eight years, uh, seems to have worked pretty well up here in the superstructure. Which is interesting because that, that's where you're seeing a lot of temperature change, as the sun is on a place and then it gets shaded and cools off. Um, that temperature fluctuation causes the steel to expand and contract, which will pop off the paint, unless the dehumidification is handling that and kicking on when the temperature fluctuates too much. And that seems to be what happened. Ooh, this pass passageway has a lot of water damage. Yeah, this is the one on the O2 level. We're looking forward right now on the starboard side. Uh, this one still has water damage to this day. In fact, we recently had volunteers rip up all the tile. So now we're heading forward towards the combat engagement center. That's what's through that door. This is currently interpreted as Halsey stateroom. So this is great to see what it used to look like. It had a carpeted floor. Who knew? Uh, but this space is, was completely destroyed by water damage from the overhead uh, rusting out, which caused us to uh, reinterpret it as World War II. Though you can see all the toilets are removed. This opens up the ends of the plumbing so that they ventilate more and dry out. They're not holding water. And here you can see the severe corrosion in the overhead. Somebody just patched it with putty and obviously that didn't work. Uh, so that has caused a lot of issue in the deck below.
These are all flag officer birthing compartments. So it looks like our uh, 15 minutes for today. And just before we get into the combat engagement center, I'm really excited to see what that space looks like, how much of the equipment is still there versus what we have had to collect over the last two decades to fill it in. But that is, in my opinion, the best restored space on board. Uh, so be sure to tune in with us next Wednesday for part three, where we go into CEC and beyond. I'm not sure what will be after that in the video. If you're interested in watching part one of this series, you haven't gotten too sick from watching the shaky cam here or too scared by the various Sasquatch sightings we've seen, there's a link in the description below to episode one. This is episode two, and we're, we're going to keep putting these out every single watch at Wednesday until we've gone through the whole video. Uh, again, it looks like there's about three hours, somewhere between two and three hours of footage there. I haven't watched it yet, so I don't know, and I'm, I'm not entirely sure what we're going to get in the rest of it. So that's part of the fun of this. Again, what space are you most interested in seeing its condition before the museum got it? Let us know in the comments section down below. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourselves. Your donations allow us to make videos of significantly higher quality than this found footage we're using. And we appreciate your support. You can also support us by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find out about the museum and our channel. Thanks for watching.